morning everyone, I'm Gary Martin and if it's the first time you've tuned into the channel I've now been doing YouTube just over a year and today's video is to just talk about you know, if I were to start YouTube again from the beginning what would I do differently because I, I would do a lot differently you know, especially when it comes to golf YouTube and, and golf vlogging and uh, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of you guys out there that want to start creating your own content and you know, just don't know where to start and that's what we're going to talk about today So if you have been watching my channel from the beginning, you'll know I was very fortunate to have you know one of my best friends sort of help and guide me a little bit uh, to start with, James Robinson. And um, you know, even with all James's help and advice, you know, there's only so much that James, you know, could do to, to help me get going, you know. But a lot of the a lot of the stuff that I've learned sort of after a year of vlogging now has just been sort of through trial and error, through making mistakes and. Um, you know, I think if you watch this vlog, if you are interested in making content, you know, I'll be able to save you a, a lot of time, you know, getting your kit together and, you know, download it right apps and, and not spending money in areas you don't need to because, you know, I would guess that I'd probably spent over a thousand pound on equipment that I, I didn't really need, you know, but, um, you know, if you're as keen as I were, you're on YouTube and you, you're vlogging or you're looking around, sorry, and you you know you're looking at what kit you need to, to get better and uh, sometimes you know you can get the kit but you don't actually know how to use it because obviously we're not we're not uh, professional videographers or you know whatever you want to call it uh, media media people I mean, we're just sort of golfers and you know we're trying to create a bit of content so anyway I'm gonna stop blabbing what would I have done differently well first thing I did uh, once I got the idea of starting YouTube is I went on YouTube and I had a look at what a good vlogging camera were um, But there were no specific to golf obviously, you know vlogging is quite a broad You know the broad spectrum into it. You can vlog a lot of different things. So I've come up with this Canon M50 Pro camera which James started with as well, you know, so he's obviously He obviously made the same mistake as I did although he did advise me to record on a mobile phone, but you know obviously I looked at um, you know James's kit and, and thought well no I want to do it right I'm gonna get I'm gonna get a you know a proper camera but I didn't need it I didn't really and I've been recording my content now on an iPhone for the last six months you know and it's so much more convenient but what I found with the the, the M50 Pro it's a fantastic camera great for vlogging but again if you're not a pro if you're not a videographer you can't get the most out of the camera so you know not everything's automatic on it it's it's obviously a lot of things can be set manually um, so as far as sound quality and and the color of images and stuff like that they weren't always great because um, I think it needed it needs somebody who knows what they're doing to to use the camera so that's soon been ditched really and I'm, I'm on an iPhone now so I've now got a 750 pound camera that I didn't really need um, what would I have done differently I'd have actually gone on YouTube and had a look at a perfect mobile phone vlogging kit. So that, that would have been, what I, if I'd have known what I know now, that's what I would have researched, because my issues have been that I've transitioned from a camera to a mobile, but the, the sort of hardware that I've had didn't really work with a mobile as far as audio and cables and stuff like that. So if I'd have just vlogged, you know, perfect mobile phone vlogging kit, I could have got all the right sort of audio and bits and pieces to work with a mobile phone and then I wouldn't have had these you know issues halfway you know through starting YouTube so within my first year so that's what I would have done differently I'd have bought audio and then I bought you know obviously the cables that connect the audio to a mobile to give the best you know sound quality and you know I'd have saved myself a fortune so I guess you could get a good audio set for 250 pound uh, whereas I'd spent £750 on a camera I didn't need when my, my phone would have just done, done ju just as good a job. But, you know, recording a phone, it's not just about, um, you know, getting decent sound and, and, uh, and, and colour clarity because it's automatic. I would say it's more about, you know, when you're on a golf course and it's really busy, you know, any golf YouTuber will tell you this, as soon as, as, soon as golfers see you know a big camera and a big tripod it's as though like it's it's a red rag to a bull you know and uh, they want to sort of chase you down or 
you know you'll get sort of members or people sort of want to come up and see what you're doing and it just really slows you down you know where everything becomes a problem where since I've been using a mobile phone I can have on a small little tripod it can be put in my bag and it can come out you know when I want it to and it's just so lightweight and easy to carry I mean you'll remember I'll put one of my old vlogs in when, when we first started I couldn't even hold the camera with one arm you know the camera with that heavy uh, we, you know, tripod and full setup and all audio connected. You know, trying to play golf, carrying your bag and carrying a big, you know, tripod with every camera. And I'll tag that video because I think it's hilarious now. And obviously now I've just got a little handheld tripod that's probably this big. Um, you know, and, and obviously a very lightweight camera and setup, so it goes in bag. And half the time I don't think people even realise what we're doing. You know, they can't even tell because it's such a small setup. And um, yeah, it's just a lot, lot better, a lot lighter, easy to carry around. But the biggest thing is, is when you're doing it off a mobile phone. If you know what I did, is I bought the MacBook Pro, and obviously I've got the iPhone. And um, you know, so easy to to transfer, you know, files from one to another. And um, you know, that were another issue I had when when I was um, when I was doing it on a camera. Obviously, I needed to get different connectors and cables to transfer data and it took longer you know now you've just got an eye drop button and it's all these big massive files that were taking ages that transferred in a matter of sort of you know a minute or so um, so just so so much more efficient to, to transfer uh, data you know from one thing to another making a good thumbnail and using good software I mean the software I use is £10 a month but it makes making a thumbnail so easy because, you know, obviously you can imagine we're taking a still picture of, of me or whoever I'm filming with, but you can't just use that background as a thumbnail. That has to be, you know, you need to obviously trim the background out and um, without good software, you know, you can make a real pig's ear of that. So I use Canva, I'll tag that in there. It's £10 a month, but it really does make life easy for setting up sort of thumbnails it's easy just drop a background in you drop the images you want in then trim the backgrounds position it a bit of text you know happy days um, but I think one of the biggest mistakes people make with thumbnails is they just take a picture and then obviously cover it with some text and I think it it just looks a little bit unprofessional sometimes or it don't look as clean and as sharp um, so that would be one of my biggest tips and I did notice an improvement once using uh, you know these cleaner looking thumbnails i did start to get better views and better clicks on new not new subscribers necessarily because i don't always subscribe but new views so if you are new please do subscribe uh, it's not often i ask that in videos and something i've got to get better at is having a better introduction and um, and conclusion where i do you know at least ask you to subscribe because uh, you know i'm like you guys you know i do get cringed out by some of that stuff but Unfortunately, that's that's what I'm doing now. So, you know, it seems a shame not to try and get you guys on board. Um, what else would I do differently? I think, I think audio-wise, we keep mentioning audio, don't we? Um, I probably wouldn't start until I've done a bit of testing with audio because you can spend a fortune audio and still not get it right especially when it comes to golf and the conditions you're playing in with golf i mean i've just bought or not just but recently bought an external mic so this is one that sits on the top of the camera for when you're vlogging with sort of more than two people and you know i've made quite a few videos now good concepts but it's all been trial and error and, and obviously that's what it's about for me it's learning from my mistakes where i've used the external mic because i've got four people I'm recording with and only you know when I've got the uh, these sort of clip on mics I can only have two people and um, it's just you've got to be careful where you are you know I've just done the um, the Champions League driver sort of knockout and we're on a driving range where it's a bit of sort of quite windy conditions you've got a main road at the back and that microphone is so good it can pick up a pin drop and um, there was just far too much background noise where we're recording, you know, and that's what you've got to be careful at with these external mics. The better mic you get, the obviously more it obviously picks up, you know, so you've just got to be careful. Like, I mean, 
if I could buy some mics again, and obviously this is something I'm going to have to invest in in future, I'm going to sell my camera first, I'm going to get some um, lavender mics with more than two people, so, you know, where I could have maybe four or, or five people, you know, using a lavender mic, it's very important, you know, I'd love to um, do some sort of format like the Champions League again, with, with either irons or, you know, different products, um, you know, with a launch monitor as well, which I have bought now, and I'll be doing a video on that soon. But with better audio, because it really did spoil it, and I know that, and you know, obviously you guys do, because you know I read the comments. Um, so, you know, in golf, you're not always going to be playing in twos. I'd be looking at trying to get lavender mics, where you've got at least at least four for when you're playing in a four ball, at least a mic for everyone. Um, and that's you know something that I would have done and still still need to do um, if I was starting again. Now this next tip, it's not something I would have done differently because luckily I had the advice from James on this one. But it was not to scrap content, you know, because it takes a lot of time to record a video and edit it. And sometimes you can edit it and you can watch it and you don't like it. You know, you're not happy with it. But it's like anything in life. If you aspire to be the best you can be you're never going to be happy with a lot of things um, you know but you have to learn from your mistakes and you know sometimes putting that content out there and you know getting getting feedback from you guys um, there's nothing better than that because you guys can pick up on things that even we don't see so you know James is completely right on that one it's you know if you guys are anything like me without that advice there's a lot of things out of scraps um, you know, and I posted some videos as well where I thought, you know, they're not very good. I thought they're not going to do very well. And it, honestly, some of them videos can be the best. You know, you just never know, do you? What you can be very critical of yourself sometimes. So I think my biggest tip would be is post your videos. You know, if you start to get subscribers and friends watching your videos, they'll understand where you are. You know, they're not stupid. They know that obviously you can't just start a YouTube channel and be perfect. And you know, you'll be guided by your subscribers and, um, you know, some can be quite critical. I don't think sometimes they understand how difficult it is, but, you know, you've just got to take the rough and the smooth and, um, and use it all as constructive criticism. So don't be scared if you start a YouTube posting videos. Um, I don't know whether I'll ever go back now to my original ones and delete some of them. I don't think I will, because I think, I think it's nice to sort of, see the story and see the progression um, when I want I've just done a video with Tahid recently actually where we look back we did a year's anniversary and I posted some content in that video from when we first started and for me it was quite quite nice to see you know development because back then you know weren't using uh, shot tracer um, you know audio was pretty crap uh, obviously presentation weren't very good but you know, you guys, when when we posted that series, never moaned about it or complained. You know, you just watched it, and you know, you accepted it for what it were. And uh, you know, I was looking back and thinking, how did you even watch that? You know, there were no ball flights. We were just swinging, and you couldn't even see your ball. But um, again, you know, that stuff that at the time I probably didn't want to post, but post it, and, and how well did it do? It's built obviously the profile up to where it is now, so. Yeah, don't be scared of posting content, even if you're not happy with the quality of it. Another important point to mention is, you know, you'll notice if you watch YouTube, is some people have sort of background sounds in their introduction, uh, which, you know, adds to the video aesthetically. I don't know if you might call it. It makes the video a bit more pleasurable, I guess. But one thing I didn't learn until I actually started YouTube is once you need to obviously have licensed music, so you need to subscribe to... A platform where you can sort of download music and, and put it into videos um, because otherwise YouTube won't let you, you monetize your videos you know if, if you've got music in there that's not that's you know not licensed and it's not legal to use so I subscribe to Epidemic Sounds again it's roughly about £10 a month but if you are going to use music in your videos you know overlay music you've got to be aware of that you've got to keep up that subscription because if you unsubscribe because I did it at one stage I unsubscribe because I'm thinking well do you know what I don't know 
I don't know how much I actually need to put music in my videos. I think it's great, but I think with you guys, sometimes you just like to get to the point on videos and you don't always need an introduction. In fact, get in the comments, you know, am I wrong or right on that? Do, do, do you enjoy the introduction and the music and a bit of a, you know, a tease about what's in the video or do you prefer just to get straight stuck in? Um, that'd be something I'll learn today from your feedback. But I decided to unsubscribe and anyway, I kept getting messages from uh, YouTube saying that all my videos were starting to be unmonetized because, um, you know, obviously the the epidemic sounds were are making complaints that I was using music that I weren't paying for anymore. So if you are going to, you know, use music in your videos, it does need to be licensed to monetize it, but you do have to keep your subscription up then, otherwise them videos will become unmonetized. So um, a bit of a commitment there. And I think final tip, and something that took me quite a while to get my head around, is try to, and st I still need to improve on this by the way guys, is remember your audience is much further than your local community. You know, obviously I've got quite a strong accent, and it's it's something that I really need to learn how to tone down actually, because um, obviously the audience is worldwide, you know, and our accent in Yorkshire is very strong, and. I do need to probably slow down a little bit on camera and um, choose my words a little bit better, you know, try not to use too many slang words and make it, make make things a little bit more understandable for people, you know, from, um, for our wider audience because it is, you know, even now a year in, you, you do forget how far and wide your channel gets and, um, I guess if people don't understand how you, you speak, you know, they're not going to subscribe, they're not going to watch your videos, so it's definitely something to bear in mind, there's a lot of strong accents, you know, around, and um, you've got to try to tone it down, and I'm really guilty of not doing that, you know, and I'm really guilty of not even getting to that stage of trying yet, so it's something that's on my sort of radar. I know some people do actually enjoy the accent, but again it's got to be understandable hasn't it? you've got to be able to understand it so I think I think talking slower is going to be um, a goal of mine this year and certainly trying not to use so many slang words but uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes you know it's not easy if you're from Yorkshire we have got a quite a fixer accent so you know if you've got any questions guys you know if you are thinking of making golf content um, you know, get in the comments and it might lead on to a second video because uh, I'm sure some of you, you know, might be interested in to know the bits and pieces and um, I'll try and elaborate on them. So yeah, get in the comments if you've got any questions. I have only been doing it a year so I'm certainly no pro um, but you know, a year experience it's better than none, isn't it? So I'm sure it could help somebody who's looking to start. See you later guys, bye.